the matrix I perceive as real. The matrix I perceive as real. It is real and it is real. It's real. Creators, welcome back to my channel. If you're new watching, welcome as well. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the solar eclipse in Sagittarius, which is happening on the 14th of December. This eclipse is the very last one of this year. And in 2020, we've had six eclipses, which is not usual because we usually have around four to five eclipses per year. And as you know, a lot has been happening on a global level. And this has to do with the number of eclipses as well. Solar eclipse is basically a new moon, but it is much more powerful. So when the moon and the sun is exactly aligned with each other, the shadow of the moon is casting onto the earth. So we momentarily experience the absence of sunlight. So if so, depending on your location, you may or may not be able to witness this solar eclipse. And you can easily Google this eclipse and find out if you can see it or not. By the way, you can also manifest with this solar eclipse. So there are many different ways of doing this. But around the solar eclipse, it could be the exact date or... A couple days later basically you just write down your wish list and it's important that you're being clear about that but not too specific to the point that makes you feel anxious or want to control the things so as a rule of thumb go general and focus on the words that make you feel uplifted and feel free to add details as long as you don't feel comfortable okay so let's dive into this particular solar eclipse. All right, so as you can see here, uh, this solar eclipse has a lot of fire energy because there are five planets and fire signs. Well, technically the south node is not a planet, but it is one of the major points in astrology. So. I counted it. So I have the chart here. So at the time of solar eclipse, there are three planets are in conjunction with the south node and they are the sun, moon and mercury. So the best way to leverage on this cosmic event is to let go of certain beliefs. So Sagittarius represents your higher beliefs your belief systems, your philosophy, life motives or any sort of patterns that allows you to see the big picture and since all these planets are located in Sagittarius we as a collective are experiencing opportunities to let go of certain information uh, certain emotional attachments and public roles this could be a job or task depending on the shape of your own birth chart the same energy will be applied differently, but as a general description, this will be a really great opportunity to let go of certain thought patterns that have been previously blocking us from moving forward. And this can only happen when we completely surrender and let it go. So that being said, uh, particularly Gemini, Virgo, Cancer, and Leo rising people will feel more impacts than other rising signs. And what is noticeable about this chart is Mars is giving trying easy aspects to all these planets from Aries. So Mars is very strong in Aries. It's been very strong for the last three months or so. So this will be really good. Basically, your inspired action will completely support the new beginning. You may not see the whole new beginning uh, unfolding right away, right after the solar eclipse, but it will gradually escalate uh, for the next six months or so. And that's when we will see the fruition 
of whatever we are planting during this period of time. Yeah, so there's a lot going on here. And especially right now, we have a cluster. We have a couple of clusters of planets, one in Sagittarius, the other in Capricorn. So it does have a lot of strong energy and it shows clear emphasis on certain parts of your life. So if you want to know more details, you can pull up your own birth chart and see in which house you have Sagittarius. Overall, we'll find it easier to be more passionate and excited about something new. And by the way, we need to first let go of any kind of emotional attachments, any residual emotional leftovers in order to start something new. And we can feel passionate about this new beginning. And that's indicated by this trine aspect between Mars and Moon. And moving on to Mars with Mercury. Ooh, okay, so this represents very quick mind. We can learn something very quickly for the next six months or so. Particularly if you have been wanting to study or learn some new skills for a while, this is a really good time to start. So give it a try and you'll be benefit a lot by releasing certain thought patterns. So you may need to unlearn some thought patterns or skills in order to make some room for new things to come. And because Mars is stronger than Mercury, you'll be better off by taking more actions rather than pondering upon certain issues or learning technical skills. You just need to take action. And the action will bring you faster momentum. So you can take courage to learn something new and improve certain skill sets. On a collective level, there are going to be a whole new beginning in regards to any areas represented by Sagittarius and that includes legal system, foreign relationships, traveling and this could indicate that there will be more uh, opportunities to travel across the world. And Sagittarius also rules some belief systems, philosophy, mindset. The ruler of this solar eclipse is Jupiter and it's at the 28th degree of Capricorn. And when Jupiter is in the sign of Saturn, that can be pretty tricky. And, and on top of that, Jupiter and Saturn are physically right next to each other at the time of solar eclipse. So this represents that whatever visions and growth potentials you're planting at this moment will not quickly unfold as you may want because Saturn brings slow, cautious, and conservative approaches. But this is not necessarily something negative because Saturn actually brings more stability and durability. So you can actually accomplish much, much more than usual, even though the process itself may take a little while. And by the way, Saturn and Jupiter are in conjunction in, uh, in the later degree of Capricorn and earlier, early degree of Aquarius. So this happens only once in 20 years. And last time it happened was uh, in Aries. So Actually, um, I heard that it has been like hundreds of years since, since Jupiter and Saturn are coupled each other in the sign of Aquarius. So this is a huge thing. And by the way, Saturn is super strong in Aquarius. It's in its own sign. So on a collective level, there are going to be a lot of new rules and regulations applied to anything related to Aquarius, such as social media, technology, the cutting edge technology, uh, artificial intelligence, and any community and movements driven by humanitarian causes. This can represent ideological movements as well. So for the next 20 years, uh, we're going to experience a lot of gradual progress in our community on a global scale. 
so in the sense we are going to operate ourselves uh, based on the brotherhood and sisterhood based beliefs even though there are hundreds of countries on this planet we are going to be much more interconnected with one another overall people will become much more serious about the consequences of using technology and especially those people are born during this period of time early 2021 or around the Christmas of this year oh they're going to be a really good teacher figures when they grow up after the age of 35 or 40 onwards so this is a huge moment in uh, our history I would say I think I kind of digressed from the solar eclipse so let's take get back so another thing that is noticeable in this solar eclipse is Neptune Neptune is squaring all these planets in Sagittarius both south node and north node as well so Neptune has been very strong in the sign of Pisces for almost like for almost like 80 years and it will continue to be strong until 2025 because Neptune is one of the outer planets in our solar system it takes approximately 13 years just to shift a sign and it's in its own sign Pisces so it is super strong so this healing energy from Neptune is challenging Mars no not Mars Sun, Moon and Mercury, South Node and North Node. So this means that we can be unclear about certain information, our public roles, possibly career for some of you and your own emotions, your domestic lifestyles. Again, if you want to know more details, you need to look at your own birth chart. But overall, um, this is a period of time that we feel kind of like confused and even deceived, uh, delusioned in a sense. And the best way to use this placement is not to figure out what exactly is going on, but surrender. Because we as a human cannot understand the depth of knowledge of uh, Neptune. Because Neptune is very unclear, it is mysterious. One of the correspondences is fog. You know, when there is a thick fog, we can't even see what's in front of us. So likewise, instead of trying to figure out what exactly is going on, we need to surrender and cultivate faith in a sense. One of the ways to use this energy is to invest in creative endeavors. So. We can better communicate through Piscean mediums such as music, painting, poems, or metaphors. Because when Mercury is squared by Neptune, there are lots of omissions, missing information. Some facts are distorted. So the more you use the left brain, the creative sides, you're going to feel much more fulfillment and accomplish much more as well. And it's also important that you need to allow yourself to explore your emotions. During this ecliptic season, it is not uncommon that we experience a lot of emotional highs and lows. It's like a roller coaster. It is perfectly normal. And instead of labeling certain emotion, analyze it, trying to fix things, you need to allow yourself to feel this broader spectrum of emotion just allow whatever that wants to surface up and recognize it and let it go don't get attached last note saturn and jupiter are soon entering into aquarius and at the time of eclipse saturn is actually at the very last degree of capricorn in tropical system so whenever a planet is at the very last degree of a sign this is when we harvest all the experience and lessons we've learned you know Saturn is a, one of the slow moving planets it takes about two and a half to three years to shift a sign so for the past three years or so 
whatever you have learned is now being harvested. You are learning the lessons and you're not going to be challenged in the same manner for the, for the next 30 years. As a collective level, we, uh, accompli we have accomplished stability and maturity in certain area of our life. And if you want to know what it is, you need to look at your own chart. Oh, by the way, I created a word list of each sign and planets. If you guys are interested in, the link is below in description. Check it out. There are more than 1400 words for all 12 signs. So you can learn astrology and how to read your chart or transit charts if that's what you're passion yeah and i'm just going to briefly address what you can expect from the solar eclipse depending on your rising sign if you are sagittarius rising who your entire life is changing especially if your rising sign is around the 20th degree of sagittarius particularly your relationship uh, your marriage or business partnership can reach an ending of some sort and going into a new phase you need to revamp in some way shape or form and you would also need to release your attitude towards committed relationships that you have been holding on for many many years if you're a capricorn rising then the solar eclipse is happening in your 12th house so there's gonna be a huge huge shift and new beginning in regards to your subconsciousness and this could also mean uh, spirituality your creative endeavors and and for the next six year <laughs> for the next six months or so you are going to find the new way of taking a break new way of relax and and uh, and utilizing your private time for the best results. So Mercury rules your sixth house, so you need to let go of certain habits and routines. It could be certain diets or or your work routines. This change will bring you an enhanced level of productivity overall you'll be able to resolve any challenges that you encounter on a daily basis in a new way and if your Aquarius rising the solar eclipse is happening in your 11th house so there is a huge new beginning in your community your friendship and your long-term vision as well and mercury rules your fifth house you also uh, need to release some sort of hobbies or it could be a lover or a way of expressing yourself creative expression you need to release the facts and information you have previously known as truth because things are changing and as you're open to new information you'll be able to create a whole new beginning in your 11th house by the way 11th house also represents your financial income so this could be about making additional like passive income sources if you're pisces rising uh, the solar eclipse is happening in your 10th house so there's a huge new beginning in your career your public persona and your responsibilities this will help you become a new kind of authority figure embracing new leadership styles and mercury rules your fourth house and seventh house so there's a sense of need to release responsibilities regarding your home life and you need to let go of your beliefs around your home your roots your emotional foundation and as well as your relationships these are all connected your career public persona is tightly interconnected to your emotional security as well as one-on-one -on -one relationship if your air is rising this solar eclipse is happening in the ninth house so 
Ninth house is all about the belief system. You're having a new belief system. You can gain new mentor figures, teachers that you genuinely respect and look up to. You need to clear up your social circles as well and let go of your beliefs around your communication styles and uh, daily routines as well to make it healthier. Any beliefs that have focus on uh, improving your productivity and uh, health, diet, wellness will help you stay grounded. So if you're Taurus rising, the solar eclipse is happening in your 8th house. So there's a whole new beginning in your subconsciousness. Mutual resources. So if there's any collaborative projects going on, then you will find new ways of benefiting and making financial results. You can have a lot of emotional ups and downs, but this will help you figure out what is your shadow side, what you need to release in order to become a better version of yourself. So if there are any surprises happening in your life, embrace them because they are really good opportunities for you to look deep, deep within yourself and develop emotional intimacy with your significant partner if you have. If you're a Gemini rising, the solar eclipse is happening in your seventh house. So ooh, your relationship is going to become a clean slate. The way you approach relationship, whether it be a romantic long-term or business partnership is going to be changed totally. And the more you let go of your previous attitude, the more lucky and serendipitous events you may encounter. This is also a good opportunity to clean up your emotional foundation and home life, your family affairs, etc. The more you let it go, the lighter you will feel. If you're Cancer rising, this solar eclipse is happening in your sixth house. So there are going to be a whole new beginning in your work routines, your daily lifestyles and productivity. You can start working on new projects and improving your health to another level. Mercury represents your 12th and 4th houses, so you need to let go of your subconscious patterns. You need to clean up your emotional world and let go of the details. Cultivate more faith. In this way, you can make room for new opportunities to come in regards to your work and any sort of challenges you deal with. Because the 6th house represents challenges and problem-solving skills and Mars is in the 10th house so your career or public responsibilities are going to help you implement new belief systems and opportunities so if you're Leo rising there is going to be a whole new beginning in your love life dating uh, creative expression your children if you have you can find a new project in the for the next six months and overall it's gonna be a very uplifting experience for you yeah and if you're mercury rising you have the solar eclipse in the fourth house so new beginnings in your home life this could be about your property real estate getting new house or having a new family member on a psychological level, you will be able to establish a new sense of emotional foundation. You can find something um, that you familiarize with and that is going to serve you for a long term. If you're Libra rising, then your solar eclipse is happening in the third house. So there is a huge new beginning in your communication styles, the way you interact with other people as a community member. And if you're in business, this can be about your marketing, advertising, and you can also learn some new skills and learn new topics. But first of all, you need to let go of certain like old belief systems and old facts that you have been holding on to. In this way, you can create new room. And your Mercury represents your 12th house and 
what else? Um, ninth house. So yeah, there is a double emphasis in your belief system. So carefully go over your own belief systems and you can go through some filtering processes to find out what you truly resonate with. For the next six months, you can make a lot of new friends as well. If you're Scorpio rising, then the solar eclipse is happening in the second house and this is about your self-worth and your personal financing. So for the next six months, you can find out new opportunities to make more money and invest money. And you may also need to let go of your long-term goals or visions. And by doing that, so basically you're switching to a new goal and in this way you can financially benefit and this will help you find a way to see yourself in more respected way increasing your self-confidence and self-worth so i hope this is resonating with you and and happy christmas happy holidays take the best out of this cosmic events and by the way i may start doing live streaming having solar eclipse in the third house so uh, if you guys are interested in i'll make sure to turn on the notification so you can get notified and i'll see you in the next one bye have a good one